If he was some kind of a, you know, compulsive liar, you would think that his stories wouldn't have been based in, in reality. On January 6, 1982, he found the Ark of the Covenant. And so when he speaks, we need to sit up and listen. and say, like, hey, this guy has got credibility. Have you ever heard of Ron Wyatt? One of his biggest claims was that he actually discovered the Ark of the Covenant. Yes, the Ark of the Covenant. He's a bit of a man of controversy. And I've got a friend on the show today to tell you a little bit more about Ron, who passed away back in 1999. It is Kevin Fisher from arcdiscovery.com. How you doing, Kevin? It's great to be here, AJ. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Good to have you. And, uh, you know, I spoke with you a little bit before we began about how I took my son to the Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia. And, uh, of course, this is one of the things Ron is known for uh, having discovered or at least brought attention to, even though I think people were aware of it before him. You know, people in the academic field seem to poo-poo his work a little bit. Uh, but uh, I've seen you recently on The Root Awakening and uh, kind of doing a series called Rediscovering Ron Wyatt, I, I believe is the is the name of it. And uh, it, it kind of struck my memory from seeing you on there before talking about some different things. So before we get into that, Ron Wyatt and, you know, his uh, some of the discoveries he made and who he was as a person and uh, the whether or not he found the Ark of the Covenant, Tell me a little bit about yourself and your ministry and maybe what drives you to do what you do. Sure. So uh, in 1984, I met Ron Wyatt at a presentation in Nashville. I was hooked and I wanted to help him out. I didn't have the capability at that time to have the time off work and the money and so forth. But I was keeping track of what he was doing. And when he died in 1999, there was really a void there in getting these discoveries out to the world. And so I started going out to the discovery sites. I've been overseas 18 times uh, working with the discoveries. And it's just time after time you see that these sites are real. And so in 2000, I started the website arcdiscovery.com. And so I'm promoting these discoveries that are 100% authentic there's no hocus pocus trichinosis going on here. These are real things, real sites that God is really bringing out because we're near the end of time and God wants this evidence of past judgments to be shown to the world. You know, what happened at the flood? God had to destroy the wicked, but he saved his righteous through the disaster. You know, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. God destroyed the wicked, but he led his people out by the hand. You know, at the Red Sea crossing, he destroyed the wicked and led his people across. And at Mount Sinai, he wrote the law that we're going to be judged by. So God is lovingly bringing out this evidence of truth for the world to see. And this stuff is just amazing. God used Ron Wyatt immensely in the 1970s before he found anything. He was praying to the Lord, Lord, help me find something that will help someone get to heaven. It wasn't a prayer, Lord, I want to get rich and famous. It was about helping someone get to heaven and live for eternity in paradise with the Savior. And so, you know, Ron made his first trip out in 1977 to look for the ark and had a, a total of five days in the area. And he, he, he relocated the ark that had been cast aside in a 1960 uh, venture out there by a, a group and it appeared in Life magazine. And so God uh, helped Ron by stalling their taxi at places they needed to look. They prayed first and God stalled their taxi, shut it down. They put a pile of stones there and three times that day, the taxi stalled. And the next day, Ron walked out from those piles of stones and found the remains of the ark, the remains of anchor stones that hung from the ark and the remains of Noah's house. And so God started this partnership with Ron Wyatt in 77. And for the next 22 years, AJ, he was he was in this 100 percent. It's estimated he spent a million dollars of his own money working as a nurse in the Methodist, making some money going overseas, making some money going overseas 140 times. If you can imagine, AJ, that uh, he went overseas working on these discoveries and so with my ministry, I'm trying to promote the authenticity of these sites. They're 100 percent 
real. But, you know, as you say, as you mentioned, uh, there are those, you know, the experts. What, what are the experts saying? Well, most of the experts don't believe in these discoveries. They say that they're false. How could one man find these five major discoveries? Well, with the help of God, it can happen. And, you know, John the Baptist, let's see, was, was he schooled with, with the uh, scribes and Pharisees? Was he an expert? No, he wasn't, but he had God with him. And the leaders in Jesus' day rejected the Son of God standing before them. And so the same forces of darkness in that day that tricked the leaders are tricking these expert archaeologists that say Ron Wyatt is a fraud. But in fact, you know, he's 100% real. So, so yeah, my ministry, I'm just trying to get the word out there and tell the world these things are real. Uh, God has brought them out to help mankind, AJ. Yeah, it is fascinating to me that uh, many people would look at the evidence that we see, especially for, for the Mount Sinai location. That was uh, kind of a, a, a part of his things that he popularized um, that really, I feel like there's a stronger case to be made archaeologically for Sinai being there, where it is. Um, Definitely. The, you know, sort of this, this blackened peak, it's, it's the highest mountain in northwestern Saudi Arabia, and uh, you've got the, really the only place that you could have had the Israelites cross into what is ancient Midian. Um, and, and there's a whole other thing about how northwest Saudi Arabia is ancient Midian. So um, yes. recently I had David Roll on the program and, and he was talking about, you know, how his belief that a lot of this stuff with Sinai and Arabia, that specific issue, you know, he, he used the word pseudo archaeology, you know, um, there's too much of this going on today and, and just sort of seems to be entrenched in this idea that, that Mount Sinai is the traditional location. I wonder with academia in particular, if they're entrenched in their biases and they get entrenched in their views, if this doesn't have something to do with sort of a rejection in that realm of Ron, of a guy like Ron. You know, you, you mentioned how the disciples were, uh, you mentioned John the Baptist, but the Bible specifically says about the disciples, they were untrained, ordinary men, you know, and that confounded the uh, the Sadducees and the rulers of their day, but you know, you've got to have uh, you know um, yes. peer-reviewed sources, source material, and and things like that. And when a guy like Ron comes along, it's almost like I can understand why they're responding the way they are. But when you look at the evidence for some of these discoveries, and again, the the Mount Sinai location in particular is near and dear to my heart because I I just can't see it uh, biblically, uh, geographically happening in the traditional location there. The um, I think there's yeah. all kinds of problems with it, but it just seems like people, despite that, have an issue with Ron, and uh, I find that fascinating because, as you mentioned, he's a he was a person who really, in his heart, wanted to share the gospel with people, wanted to encourage people in their faith. Could you tell me a little bit more just about him as a person? I wanted to stop on that point and say, tell me a little bit more about him because. You know, you, you mentioned how he spent his own money going over to see these things. He was a nurse yeah. anesthetist. He, he was not a trained archaeologist. But that's right. the discoveries that he made speak for themselves. So tell me a little bit more about him. I wanted to just kind of dive in on that point a little bit. Sure. He, he was a self-trained archaeologist. Some people call him a biblical archaeologist. Uh, I ran into a friend here in Middle Tennessee who said they were going to high school with him, and he was studying archaeology in high school, you know, on his own. So this was a lifetime uh, plan of his, studying archaeology and so forth. So he was self-taught, and he got this urge, you know, to start looking for some of these major sites, and God, you know, was with him. He's a very humble man, very, very humble. Uh, he was not out for the glory. He was out to do the Lord's will. Yes, he was here in Middle Tennessee, nurse and Methodist. And he, he gave of himself, gave his money toward this work. He's a 100% genuine person. And to hear the, the terrible things that are said about him, you know, just, you know, Googling on the Internet, it, it's so sad. But the evidence shows he's 100% real because these sites are 100% real. 
And, you know, talking about Mount Sinai, for instance, you have chariot wheel parts leading over to Saudi Arabia. Come on, you know, this is a path that God left, you know, for us to see. And these, these chariot wheel hubs have metal in the center. Some of these skeptics say, well, that's just table coral. Well, table coral doesn't have a center metal hub, you know, in it. It may be flat, but it's not a, a round chariot wheel with spokes and a metal center hub. The parts have been found on, on both shores or near both shores in Egypt and Saudi Arabia, so in, in the Sinai Peninsula. So, and then you look at Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark is incredible. Uh, the first time I went out there in 2000, before I went, I knelt down and prayed, Lord, help me find something that will help me to see that this really is the Ark. I believed it was, but I wanted God to show me something. And I found two pieces of metal uh, on the side of the ark that contained uh, aluminum metal is man-made, also has titanium metal in it. And so these were tested in the lab showing those unique man-made metals. And the, the site's exact length is stated in the Bible, 300 royal Egyptian cubits is 515 feet, and that's exactly the length of this site. It's got petrified wood in it. It has the rib timbers on the side. It's in a boat shape. Radar scans show that there is a hull underneath it there with uh, timbers and so forth. And you look at the Sodom and Gomorrah sites, AJ, you see all of this brimstone there at these ashen remains. Josephus said that he saw these remains in his day. That was the first century. And th these sites are white ashen areas along the western side of the Dead Sea going north-south. And so evidence after evidence at these sites. And so you could see that God was using Ron Wyatt with these four major sites, the Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, the Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, these are visible discoveries. You can see they are real, and you can see that God was using uh, Ron Wyatt. And so when he speaks of the Ark of the Covenant, which we're going to talk about shortly here, you we need to sit up and listen and say, hey, this guy has got credibility. This guy appears to be used by God. And so when he talks about the Ark of the Covenant, I believe 100 percent. And we can talk about some of the evidence about that at the site of the Ark of the Covenant. But so God is bringing out a, as Ron would say, a show and tell demonstration of truth. There's nothing more simple than a show and tell. Look at this. Look at this. It has a story to tell. And that's what we see coming out with these discoveries or incredible major sites that you can see. The, the real AJ and the devil, the forces of darkness, hates these sites. Amen. Yeah, I think it's safe to say at the very least that God used this man uh, who was just willing to, uh, to serve him, who wanted to help people in their faith, to add to the uh, believability in our day of the Bible, and prove it true, to, to popularize and to bring awareness to this stuff. And I, I think regardless of how somebody feels about him, certainly that was accomplished. I came to know about some of these sites, saw all these things in person. I, I never would have done that without Ron Wyatt. Tell me a little bit more about the Ark of the Covenant, because that's probably what he's most known for. And I think just like you said it, where a lot of people land on this who knew him or who believe in his story is that he discovered all these other sites and he told the truth about them. If he was some kind of a, you know, compulsive liar or just somebody who made up, you know, fanciful tales or something like that, you know, like Joseph Smith, you would think that his stories wouldn't have been based in in some way in reality. What exactly happened? Can you kind of break this down for us sure. in terms of how this came about? What yeah. was his story about discovering the Ark of the Covenant? And mm -hmm. I, I even noticed that in the background there you have... Uh, a, a replica of the Ark of the Covenant there. So mm -hmm. maybe even tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so this is a life-size replica of what Ron said the Ark of the Covenant looked like. You have the angels standing on each end, reverently looking down on the mercy seat. They're not sitting on top of it like you see in a lot of uh, models of the Ark. So this is uh, the most accurate Ark of the Covenant, you could say, that's out there. So Ron finding the Ark, in 77, he found the Noah's Ark site. In the next year, he was diving for chariot parts at the Red Sea in Nueva, Egypt, and they did find some chariot parts. 
and he made his way up to Jerusalem to get ready to fly out through Tel Aviv, and he was walking through the garden tomb grounds, and this official there escorted Ron toward the back of the garden. Ron told him about finding the Noah's Ark and the chariot wheels. He said, you know, maybe you'd like to look through this area back here, and as he's walking along toward the back of the garden there, his arm was lifted up, and these words came out of his mouth, H.A., there's Jeremiah's grotto, and the Ark of the Covenant is in there. And Ron did not think those words. He didn't speak them. God used his voice. And so he was stunned. And so the gentleman there with him said, well, that's great. We'll get you a permit to excavate. We'll give you a place to stay, provide your meals. And Ron was stunned. And so January of 79, he started the dig there. So by God using his voice, he knew that this this was God's um, showing him where the ark site was. And so on his plate, if you can imagine, H.A., he dis discovered the Noah's Ark the year before, discovered the Red Sea crossing there in 78 in the way of God. He knew then that Mount Sinai was over in Saudi Arabia. And now he's gone up to Jerusalem and he's finding the Ark of the Covenant through God's leading. Four major discoveries, you could say, in a period of one year. I mean, that's that's stunning uh, how yeah. God was use, using him. Uh, it, it's incredible. So Ron started the dig there at the Garden Tomb Grounds in January 6, 1982, after three years of digging there on and off and many people helping him. He did open a chamber under the ground there. It was a 100-foot route down through these different cavities under the ground there. It was a lot of work, but he opened up this chamber where the Ark of the Covenant was in there inside a thin walled stone box where it had been kept in this stone box and the other temple furnishing was in there. And so that's how Ron initially found it. But you have people saying, I could see the other four, but you know, he's lying about the Ark of the Covenant. You know, Ron, God would not use a liar and work with him on the other four discoveries. God knew Ron's heart. Ron did not, you know, lie about the Ark of the Covenant, and God used him on the others. That's inconsistent. God would never have partnered with Ron if he were to lie about the Ark of the Covenant. So we can see that the Ark of the Covenant is real because uh, there were some metal detection scans done above ground using a gold detector. It's a frequency detector set to detect the frequency of gold. And this frequency detector, uh, since Ron has passed away, there's this video showing the detector detecting this gold from 100 feet away above ground from different angles, triangulation pointing to one spot. And once you're above that spot, <clears throat> the detector spins. And that's a way of showing the gold is below that spot. And so where it was detecting the gold is the exact spot that Ron Wyatt said the ark was located. Now, when Ron started his excavation, AJ, he first found cross holes above ground there in the bedrock. And when January 6, 1982, when he found the Ark of the Covenant, he noticed above there was a thin walled stone box that was about here. And then there was the top of the cave here, but the cave ceiling was split. It was cracked. And he saw this dark substance had dripped down the top of the stone box God had split and pushed it aside. And so this dark substance had fallen down inside the Ark of the Covenant, on top of it, inside that stone box. And it landed, come to find out, on the western side of the mercy seat. You know, for, for 800 years or so, the blood had been cast on the eastern or right side, AJ, the blood of bulls and goats on the Day of Atonement. It was cast on this east side. They were told to always cast it there. God would speak to the high priest if necessary. But there was a vacant western side. And that vacant side was awaiting the blood of the Messiah. And so this is all incredible. I know, AJ, uh, viewers out there, but um, this, this is what happened. What was the public reception to some of these things that Ron was saying? Because I know that there was attention drawn to him and he was even seen as kind of an Indiana Jones type figure, you know, 40 years ago or so. So uh, what was, how did people respond to his, to his claims? Well, about the Ark of the Covenant, uh, there's a lot of skepticism, but Ron would say to folks, 
you know, if you don't believe that's okay, but just wait and see. Instead of having a knee-jerk reaction and saying, no way, Ron would say, you know, just wait and see what comes out. Ron had incredible evidence. He had clear photographs, okay? But he knew God did not want him to show them because prior to getting clear photographs, he had taken 600 photographs in that cave and every one of them turned out blurred. The objects in the cave he was taking photos of, they turned out blurred. And so he knew God did not want this shared to the public. And later he took a few casual photos knowing he shouldn't share them publicly and they turned out clear. So he had some clear photographs and then more evidence here we can talk about that I'm not mentioned yet and that is his fourth trip into the cave, AJ. Uh, there were these four angel men in there and they said set up your tripod and film what is about to happen. And so they, he set up his tri tripod and hit record and they lifted up the mercy seat of the Ark of the Covenant which is connected to the two angels like this here and the mercy seat. This may have weighed the mercy seat and those two angels could weigh 400 pounds or so. They lifted that up and they said reach in and take the Ten Commandments out. The world needs to see those. So he reached in and took out the Ten Commandments that Moses had put in. They put the mercy seat back down and then one of the men came over and took the Ten Commandments out of his hand and put them on a stone ledge there in the cave. And the angel said that the world needs to see these and that after the Mark of the Beast law is enforced, these tables of stone will come out. So God has a plan with these tables of stone. Now, what about the blood of Jesus? Well, the angel told Ron to take a sample of the blood and have it analyzed in the lab. And he told Ron exactly what the lab should do, reconstitute it for three days, and then take it out, put it in a growth medium for two days with gentle swirling at body temperature. So at the end of that period, Ron showed up back at the lab there in Israel, and they put it under the microscope and they extracted the chromosomes out of the white blood cells. And first of all, they told Ron, hey, this blood is alive, you know, that's amazing in itself, you know, after 2,000 years. And then they were started to look at these chromosomes, and they said, hey, this is human blood, but there's only 24 chromosomes here. There's 23 from the mother, Mary, but there's only one sex determinant chromosome contributed to create a male, and there's no 22 autosomes from a male so this was a divine arrangement. They're seeing before their eyes, this person had one earthly parent. And they turned to Ron and said, whose blood is this? They had one, you know, one earthly parent. And he said, it's the blood of your Messiah. And they started screaming and pulling at their hair, these Jews there in the lab. And so you can see the impact that this has on people when they can see the actual evidence before them that uh, this person was the Messiah. He had one earthly parent. And so God's going to show this evidence to the world as part of his demonstration of truth, along with the other discoveries. God has a plan to show this to everyone. Um, you know, we as Christians, we can say, hey, we're the elite, you know, we're Christians and so forth. But what about these poor folks who grew up as a Muslim, AJ, and they're at a disadvantage and so God is getting ready to bring out this evidence to show them, hey, Jesus was the Messiah. You need to give your heart to him. Confess your sins in Jesus' name. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart and then keep these Ten Commandments that have come out of the cave. And so this is God's perfect plan that he has, this evidence of Jesus being Messiah and the Ten Commandments and I believe, you know, during the Mark of the Beast showdown, this is going to be major news for the world to see. And I believe that's going to happen uh, rather soon. Yeah, and I love his emphasis on the gospel. I, I think that's uh, one thing that I can really appreciate about uh, what Ron did. And, and even watching old videos of him speaking publicly, not just about this, but you know, about some of these other things that he found. Uh, it's it's neat to see how he really was focused on sharing the gospel with people, that that was his heart. One of the things I heard him describe at one time, if I remember correctly, 
he went and told the Jewish authorities where this is, where the Ark of the Covenant is. They sent people in there, according to Ron, to get it, who were dressed in high priestly garb, and they died. I mean, almost like, you know, Indiana Jones uh, part one, you know, where they all, they all die yes. from exposure to the Ark. I think he said they sent him in there to retrieve the bodies or help them retrieve the bodies. Can you elaborate on that? Am I, am I getting that story yes. accurately? Because I think there may be someone out there who says, well, why, you know, if, if he found the Ark of the Covenant, why didn't he tell them where it was so they could go try to find it? Can you explain yeah, think, that a little bit? And, and can that story be verified? Okay, so the uh, Zedekiah's cave is just south of the garden tomb. The entrance to that is below the city walls there of Jerusalem. You can go inside there, pay five bucks, at least that's the way it was a few years ago. They've just changed things recently. But and go back into this cave under the ground underground there of Jerusalem. It extends out. It was a quarry where they quarried out block to build the temple. It was down in there where there were some a tunnel leading up toward the Ark of the Covenant. It actually led all the way up to Ark of the Covenant cave. And Ron didn't tell them to go up this tunnel, but they took it upon themselves, these six priests, dressed in Levitical garb, as Ron would say, went up this tunnel. It's 375 feet long. They made it 75 feet, and all six of them were struck dead. Their eyes were crossed like they had had um, a brain seizure on on both sides of uh, the brain. Holy cow. Yeah, and so he came into town a few days later and called the authorities like he does many times when he's in town. They said, we've had an incident down in Zedekiah's cave. Uh, can you meet us down there? And so when Ron went down there, they said, you know, we sit six, six men up this tunnel and we've not heard from them, you know, in several days. And so God has a plan. You know, he's, he's got his timing and so forth. God didn't allow Ron to show the lab report or the clear photos that really hurt Ron, his son told us, that he wasn't able to show this incredible evidence. And his son, we got him on video, his son said, it just isn't time, Dad. It's not time for this you know, evidence to come out. So the ark is sitting there. Yes, it was hidden by Jeremiah just before the destruction of Jerusalem, 586 B.C. It's been sitting there all this time. But uh, God has his own timing uh, for it to be shown. And the Jews today, they don't know what to do. They know it's there in that cave under the garden tomb grounds, but they don't don't know what to do. But God, you know, has a plan. We will be seeing, you know, video of it uh, at some point, you know, when the timing is right. How do you think Ron, what do you think Ron would say to our culture today? Because when I look out there in the world, um, I've got a teenager who attends local high school and just crazy, crazy stuff happened in our mm. culture. Things we wouldn't yes. have imagined even 10 mm. or 20 years ago, especially in Western culture. Uh, the decadence, the the immorality, the uh, insanity, you know, for lack of better terminology. I mean, it, it seems like yes. like mental illness is on the rise when I watch the news, you know. Uh, maybe, mm-hmm. you know, demonic activities, some of these things. What do you think Ron would say about some of the things happening today or, or to our world today? Because he passed away in 1999. Yes. Um, obviously a different world. I mean, that was really a generation ago. So uh, what would he say to the world today? I'm sure you know, he would stress purity, you know, guarding the avenues to the soul. You know, he didn't watch a lot of secular TV. He, you know, by beholding, we become changed. There's all kinds of influence, you know, through the Internet and you know cable tv so forth so we got to be careful you know what is influencing us i'm sure he would you know, got to be involved in prayer uh, we have to take a relationship with you know with christ seriously i'm sure these these are things that he would be stressing is to you know don't participate in evil we got to you know he told mary magdalene go and you know sins are forgiven go and sin no more that's what christ wants of us is to stop the sinning, to separate yourselves from the temptations, the evils that are out there. And God wants to dwell in us. The Holy Spirit wants to come in. So yes, there's many more distractions, temptations today in, in this culture. 
and the world's becoming more and more evil. The Holy Spirit is being withdrawn from the earth, and men are being more and more evil because they're not being restrained by the Holy Spirit. But we just got to you know, keep focused on uh, Christ and being separate from the world. I'm sure that's what, you know, what Ron would say. That's you know, the way he lived his life. So uh, time is short, AJ. And we got to be faithful to the end. Amen. And I know I'm always praying for our world that people would come to see the Bible is true and, and Jesus lifted up and glorified. That's certainly the answer. He Amen. doesn't want to uh, take anything away from people. You know, he wants to give us uh, so much, and there's nothing like knowing Christ. Uh, you could see that when you see Ron talk. You can see that he had the same yes. heart. Um, is there anything we kind of covered the gambit today uh, about Ron Wyatt, and the late Ron Wyatt, I should say, um, is there anything else either that I missed or, or you would like to share about him just kind of in conclusion? Sure. Yes. He really did have a genuine relationship with Christ, H.J. Let me tell you a couple stories. First one, a co-worker of his, Jesslyn Johnson, told me that uh, Ron was in an airport terminal waiting for a flight. He boarded the flight and this person comes up to him and says, when you were sitting there in the terminal, your face was lit up with light. You know, what happened when Moses came down from Mount Sinai? Mm. He had been in the presence of God. His face was lit up. Then I had a person email me who lived here in Middle Tennessee, and they said, Ron was my anesthetist when I was giving birth to my son. And when my son was born, he was stillborn. He was dead. And I looked for Ron. Apparently, Ron, you know, had prayed for her ahead of time, I'm sure. And she looked around, and there in the corner of the room was Ron kneeling and praying. And she said, all of a sudden, the supernatural light came on in the room. And the nurses and doctor there said, you could feel the presence of God in the room. And then she said, my baby started to cry. So here's this man who some people say is of the devil, who's a charlatan, who's lying about finding the Ark of the Covenant. But let's see, God is answering his prayer. His Holy Spirit is in the room there in answer to Ron's prayer, and he's bringing this child to life. Ron was 100% genuine, and these discoveries are a threat to the forces of darkness, and the devil's done all he can to shut them down. But in the end, folks are going to see a video of the Ark of the Covenant. They're going to see the Ten Commandments come out. They're going to see the blood and the testing on the blood, and, and people are going to instantly know Ron Wyatt was a servant of the Lord, and they're going to say, what else did that man touch? Well, Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, Red Sea Crossing, Mount Sinai, all these things will blow up. God's going to push this evidence of truth out through the media, through all the technology. Everyone on earth will see these discoveries and see that Jesus was the Messiah. The ultimate part of the discoveries is the blood of Jesus showing he really was the Son of God. God has a plan, A.J., and Ron Wyatt, 100% genuine. God used him, and soon the world is going to see this evidence of truth, and it'll be a very exciting day to see that, A.J. Kevin, how can people stay connected with you? And I know I mentioned your website earlier on, but... Uh, tell us a little bit more about that and, you know, like, are you working on anything new? What are you, what are you doing next? Yeah, so you can just go to arcdiscovery.com and you can check out our videos there. Uh, my contact information is there. You can email me with questions you may have or give me a phone call. But, uh, you know, I'm just busy trying to get the, the truth out there to folks. Various projects, I'm working on some video projects, trying to get some new videos out on YouTube. AJ, this, this stuff is, is so real, and I appreciate the opportunity to share with you today. Yeah, man, absolutely. Uh, thank you for coming on. Appreciate it. Just a, a fascinating figure in Ron Wyatt. I, I would just encourage our audience, if you haven't ever heard about him or seen any of these discoveries, uh, just go on YouTube. Also, just if, if you're out there listening, there's nothing like knowing Jesus. I think that's something that Ron was passionate about. I know Kevin is as well, and and uh, we here at Gospel Ministries just believe uh, in the name of Jesus that through him is, is peace and joy and the power of God. That's what he, he wants for you. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin, mm -hmm. thank you so much, my friend. Um, it was uh, thank you, Dr. H.A. I think you left us with some cool stuff. Make sure 
you uh, go and check out Kevin's stuff. And also, if you haven't done so already, what are you waiting for? Make sure you subscribe to this channel. You can also go to PastorAJ.com and you can sign up for a weekly email from me about stuff like we just talked about today. God bless you all. And Kevin, again, thank you so much. Friends, folks, we'll see you next time. Hey, there's one more thing I've got to share with you. I want you to know that you know Jesus and that you will one day be resurrected and spend an eternity with him. The Bible says that all those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That all you need to do is confess Jesus with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So just say this prayer with me right now. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I need a savior. I believe that you died for my sins and that you were raised to life three days later. Make me born again in my heart through the power of your Holy Spirit and help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are saved. Now go get yourself a Bible so that you can begin to develop godly habits in your life and make sure to join a Bible-believing local church where you can be baptized as an outward symbol of what God just did in your heart. If you don't have a copy of the Bible, send us a message and we'll get one to you. Welcome to the family, friend. Thank you.